Closed captioning for sport fishing on the fly is brought to you by The Frog Boat, inspired by nature, ingenious by design. Hey everyone, welcome to another edition of Sport Fishing on the Fly. Well that's right, we're back in the Cypress Hills and Brent Schlenker's invited us back to go after some more trophy rainbows. It was about three years ago we were here last time catching some 12 to 14 pound rainbows. Well you know he's got so many lakes here to choose from, well, he's invited us back because he's got a different lake that's got some even bigger fish that we're going to go after today. Oh, fly fishing for trophy rainbows in the wind. That's today as we take you sport fishing on the fly. Sport Fishing on the Fly is brought to you in part by Islander Reels, G. Loomis Rods, and High Drift Boats. Oh, unbelievable. Of course, started off the day, we just got out here. We have obviously some windy conditions. But we were able to, uh, Brent showed us a nice little area to hide behind here. We're kind of sheltered. And we're, you know, this lake is full of gamma shrimp. The big ones, the big gammas. So you told me to put on the uh, intermediate sink, put on some kind of gamma shrimp pattern, and give it a go, and that's what I got. Yeah, I think the full sink line here will kind of, we won't get as much drag from the wind and the waves and so forth. So yeah. that's, that seemed to be working out for it. So. Boy, that was actually the second cast with the setup, and the guy ate it. And there are big fish in here, big fish. Yeah, he's nice boy. Oh, it's a dandy. I think I might be a little underpowered with a six-way rod, but uh, let's get down here. Oh. Oh. You want to get down in the water with me, Don, or you want me to just net him for you up here? Actually, you can net him, and then we'll show him down here. I'll try to stay up above here if you don't mind. Beautiful fish. Oh, he's not ready yet. Well, he took to some major air too. He just uh, he really went for some good jumps. Now you'd say this is probably the average size in here, Brent? Yeah, he'd be about an average size fish, Don. He's got like eight, uh, probably tens and some fourteens. Oh yeah. So here's a nice big bowl. Of... Get him a big fish. Oh man. Oh nice, nice. Look at how fat he is. He's a big thick. He's a double digit fish, I would think, Don. Oh, the coast. yeah. Oh, just a beautiful rainbow. Okay, we got the fly yeah, out of the fly inside of his jaw there. Oh, just a fish of a Look lifetime. I love here. Fish get a little thick on the end. Do you want to go up? Oh, no, that's all right. We'll be able to handle them, I think. Geez, yeah, they don't have much there. Look at this. <laughs> Look at that thing. Okay, Don, I think it's ready to go here. All right. Yeah. There she goes! Off for another day, another yeah. rainbow. Oh, unbelievable. You know, I expect to catch some big fish today. Again, like I mentioned, we got some tough conditions, but they're not that bad. It's a little bit breezy. Nothing we can't cope with. Yeah, we'll probably fish this quiet area up in here for now. We'll, we'll check that out. And, and I also like fishing downwind banks. Or, they're not fun to cast in, but... What we noticed, though, yeah, what we noticed along the shore, too, is we've noticed a lot of different bugs. The gammer, shrimp are in here. There's, uh, you got everything, don't you? Leeches, pretty well everything. Yeah, this lake here predominantly has got a lot of uh, water boatmen and uh, gamera shrimp. Uh, there's some bait fish in here too, so these fish will really uh, start cruising the banks and looking for them. And I think we'll probably get some sight fishing in later on this evening when the wind goes down. Yeah, right? Excellent. You up for that? Oh yeah, we're up for it. Good. Right on. Come back. Some more big fish for the British Lanker, Cypress Hills. Fantastic.
There comes Grant again, eating as usual. We've been sitting here for half an hour waiting for him to arrive. <laughs> well, you gotta eat sometime, Grant. Hey, you ready for some? You ready for some nice fish, Grant? Yeah. We got some couple sitting right off the corner here. We're yeah. waiting for you. We'll uh, spot them. You got them. How's that sound? Just about ready. Finish your muffin and we'll go. Get <laughs> what a guy! Just about ready. He's always eating. And hey, you thought the bulldog fished a lot. Check out, uh, check out Diane. She is hardcore and she's a great caster. Little breeze ain't gonna stop her. No way. All right, let's get Granny in there and get a fish. <laughs> okay, you guys found a good spot. We gotta stock yeah. the fish though. We gotta be real stealthy going well, in. Well, we just said dawn on this corner here, uh, Grant. So uh, we waited for you. There's a few more fish moving right on this corner. We're gonna have to get down a little bit low and. You know, even with these waves, you wouldn't think they'd be able to see us up here, but oh, yeah, they can. Why they're, these big fish are, are wary. So we're gonna go down here and hunt them and uh, try to get a, a line into those white caps there. If you can handle it, we'll, we'll take you up to another fish. Well, let's go try. Big Grant, as we see here coming into us, this wind's letting up, but see the two foam lines? Yep. The two wind lanes coming in? Yep. That's those fish are sitting right, there's one. Oh, there's, there's one. one. You there. see them? Yep. Beauty, it's a big fish. Your fly, your fly is weighted? Yep. Okay, this time we're, we'll drive a cast up there like that, yeah. and we'll high line it. And we're just gonna let that wind drift that line down. Persistent stays off. <laughs> we kept throwing her in the wind there, Grant. Stayed off with as well. Great, great job. Oh, these, these fish are huge, these are trophy fish. You had to work for that one, didn't you? <laughs> Trying to keep the mic out of the wind so you can hear us. <laughs> The fish isn't cooperating, he wants to go the other way. We got him turned down wind here a little bit now. There you go. Yeah. It's trying to play out on you a little bit. Fight's not over yet. Not yet. We just gotta wait them out, I guess. Yeah, they take the time when they got their head down, they got a lot of power. <laughs> wow, after all that he finally shook it. I had so much heat on that fish. He finally shook it. Wow, nice fish though. We're trying to cover up the with the wind coming right at us. Of course, what we tried to do was change it up so I could pull him into shore and they put too much heat on him. Well, good job. you did a pretty good job there. You don't win every battle. No, let's the, go back and get this one battle. Yeah, well, we saw lots of other fish out there. Didn't we? fish working right. right in tight here, uh, Grant. So we'll get get you some more. And you did a good job there. You just uh, don't win every every battle. Yeah, that's right. All right, good going. back to the point. <laughs> Way to be, Grant. Way to be. Good job. Come on back here. Whew. I think it's on the reel. <laughs> oh, there he goes. Now he knows he's hooked. Persistence <laughs> pays off. It does. That was like, that was good because you got to see it so visual. Wow! And we had the peanut gallery there too. <laughs> Everybody's watching. All the guys wanted to coach it. Well, it just shows you what fly fishing's all about. It's about watching fish take a fly, and that's why people like to ride fly fishing so much. What? I was just gonna interrupt you there, uh, sorry. But you know, we we run that other fly by that half back. Oh yeah. Yeah. We changed, changed up. What was that? The second cast with this other new fly. So I think just yep. give him something new to look at. Good point. Really good point. Because you're right. He actually followed it a couple times, and after, and then turned away from it. Yeah. The half bath. Yep. Nose down, he's too strong, isn't he? Oh, yeah. That's great. There we go. Big head shake. That should be the end of them. Trying to beat you up. That's about the end of them. There we go, we're going. He's turtling now. Come on, baby. Yeah. Nice. Excellent. No way you can hang on over there. Oh, yeah. You ready? There's a beautiful. Oh. <laughs> Oh, there's a big one. <laughs> Look at that. 
Looks good. Excellent shot. All right, get this guy back in the water here. Nice fish. There we go. Good job. <laughs> I knew you'd win that one. <laughs> Oh, he just ripped it. Oh, it's a nice one. See, it's not quite windy enough. <laughs> we found the only shelter we can. You know, the big tip here that we have is we take, we took a bunch of casts earlier with some sink tip lines and some wet lines and full sink lines, and we weren't having any luck. The fish just weren't chasing. Real windy conditions, really lethargic, so. Decided to put on indicators and allow the, the indicator to sweep with the wind. Actually wind drift, some leeches, some condiments, and actually some of these bread premiers. And very effective. It's a really good tip. When you're having trouble picking fish up with full sink lines or wet lines, really good way to put on for a an indicator and actually drift with the wind. If you can't beat the wind, you might as well make it use for your uh, to help you out. And ooh, this is a this is a nice fish. Very nice fish. Whoa, another nice fish. Like I'm saying, we're hoping it's gonna, the wind's gonna calm down here. It's been known to, to really calm out at night. And we're hoping for a calm night because it can be pretty awesome fishing at, at evening for coronamids and, and some other caddis patterns on the top. Oh, and here's a, that's a beautiful fish, another dandy. There's a nice fish. Let's get the clean right of there. Oh, look at that. That is a beautiful fish. Look at that. Well, what we're going to do right now is, as I'm letting this guy go, I think we'll go and see if we can talk to Brent and talk him into tying us one of his special patterns. He's got some leeches. He's got Brent's premier, which is a caddis pattern. He also makes a bomber pattern. We'll see if we can tie us up. And there he goes. So let's go to the bench. See what Brett's gonna tie us up. Here's Brent's Premier Fly, and it's actually called Brent's Premier. It's a very, very versatile pattern, mainly because it imitates so many different food items. Make sure you have these materials ready before you tie the fly. For the hook, we're gonna use a 1X long size 8 nymph, some 6 aught brown thread to tie with, some peacock chenille for the body. For the hackle, we'll use a brown saddle hackle. And for the shell back and tail, we we'll use some moose body hair. The next fly we'll tie here is called Brent's Premier. Really, this is a pattern that I got from a gentleman out in Premier Lake, British Columbia, a few years ago, and the fishing was really tough. He's the only fellow that put any fish in his boat that day. The rest of us went without, so I'd give him credit for the name of the fly if I knew who he was, and maybe someday I'll run across him. I did change the pattern a little bit. But I think I found out why this pattern works so well. Now we've fished this fly in just about every zone, right from the depth of the lake, right to the top water with uh, very slow sink intermediate lines, floating lines to full sink lines at different levels. And uh, we, we think they're taking it for caddis, um, pupa, or also uh, beetle larvae, which many people don't fish a beetle pattern. And, and beetle larvae are very much a big food item for trout. So, and it's also a very, very, easy fly to tie. It's quick and the fish love to eat it. So the emerald green is really important for the body color. So you can get this peacock green. This is a glow bright chenille and also one of the nicest things happened with fly tying materials for a number of years with all these synthetics that keep coming out but they've actually started dyeing peacock curl. Now this is a really nice bright green peacock curl and that is uh, we know how great peacock curl is in so many patterns. So I'm going to take a generous uh, bunch of peacock curl here, if you will. Now, when I do tie in peacock curl, we've uh, varied off uh, the recipe with Don give you earlier, but I just want to demonstrate something here in the peacock curl for you because it's such a good material. I tie in a generous uh, amount of that, probably a dozen strands. I tie it in by the tips. Throw my half hitch here. And when I pull it back, it gets buggier. If you tie it in by the butts, you actually flatten it out as you work ahead. So I'm going to go forward, and now I'm just going to spin it into a peacock curl rope, which makes it very, very durable. 
gives me that iridescence of peacock pearl. It's that emerald green I'm looking for. I can tie it off right there. It's just an awesome material, folks. So that uh, is another thing we want to keep in mind. Now, the success of this fly, I think, I believe, I'm not sure, but this is my thoughts on this, is, is the moose body hair. It's very uh, buoyant. This fly would be a neutral buoyant fly, and it uh, won't sink and it won't float. It'll stay in the zone for a very long time. As long as you have the, the fly line to t take it and keep it in the zone for a long period of time, this is the fly that'll, that'll do it for you. I'm going to get the little bit under fur out of the moose body here so it'll stack. Put the tips in my stacker. I'll take it out opposite because I'm going to tie this shell back over the front. I usually stack up a little bit more than I need. Now you see that's a little bit longer in the body. I would have that much extra tail sticking out, which would be a little bit more than I want. Now I'll just pinch off the desired amount of moose here, and I'm just going to pinch it on either side of the hook shank and get a few good solid turns down here. I want it to hold, and I'm right behind the eye. The butts I'm going to trim off at an angle so I don't get too big a lump there when I pull it back. Now we'll just go to some brown hackle, the saddle hackle, we want something that'll swim a little bit. This is furnace, which the furnace has actually a black stripe down the center of it. Any brown will be fine. I'm going to tie it in right front there, I got a little butt that I'm going to trim off. I see a little butt of moose hair hanging out there, we'll do that. Now I'm just going to take the thread and the hackle back together. To the bend of the hook. There we go. I'll tie it off at the rear. Pull it off because the thread's actually got it secured down. I'm just going to pull my moose over the top. When I pull it, it'll tighten it right down. See, I've grabbed a little bit of hackle here. I can use a bodkin if I had one handy here. I don't. I'm just going to use my scissors to tease that out. I've got a hair hanging loose here. We'll trim that out of there for now. We'll finish it off at the back of the fly. Lots of turns, good solid turns. My whip finish, saw it off. That completes the fly, or almost completes the fly. What you want to do, which is really important, on a full back pattern, you'll notice that the hackle is spun on, and you'll see it sticking up and out from the side. If you fish a fly like that, it'll spin in the water, and the fish will know it's a fake. A spinning fly like that, they will not touch. You're very, very, chance are very limited. So what I've done, what I'll do here is trim down on the sides of the fly about a 45 degree angle. Do that on all your full back scopes. Make sure you don't cut any of the, the shell back. But you see the legs coming off the bottom of the fly here now? It's very much, that fly will fish naturally. It'll stay with a point down all the time. It'll swim the way it should. fly just swing by him and he ate it. He just ate it. And that is pretty awesome to see a fish this size. Whoa! Eat something right there. Boy, and they go psycho, don't they? Skying around. I'm going to see if I can get them over in the, get them over in the calm here. <laughs> that was funny. Put on, there's a whole bunch of gamma shrimp in this lake. So I decided to put on, of course, the, the halfback. And Dale spotted the fish that this big guy cruising right off the point, tried to get one in front of him. Well, I had to cast straight up into the wind, which was almost impossible. Got my uh, four foot cast to him. Fly went by him and he ate it. Oh, that's a nice fish, too. Holy cow. Oh, they take a while to get in. Well, again, what I just want to go through quickly, recommend a setup. I mean, I've got a six-way rod, and Brent said the minimum you want to use out here is a six-way rod, which I have. So I'm kind of getting away with the minimum. 
And when you're getting fish this size, yeah, uh, you got to suit the rod to the fish. And probably preferred setup would be an eight weight. Again, we're, uh, we're using the clear intermediate sinks. I've got a half back pattern on that's quite weighted. It flips upside down so the hackles are up. Looks like a gambler shrimp doing his little dance out there. And these big guys are, are eating it. Let's see if we can get them in here and show everybody. But, oh, and again, 10 pound test. I've got a uh, 10 pound test tippet on. They're not leader shy. And you need a minimum 10 pound in here because these fish are all over 10. That's big fish. Boy, they're tough. They just get so much feed in these lakes. You know, these lakes are full of the, the shrimp and leeches and crawnies and small little chub minnows. They have it all. Boy, yeah, I think I'm right on the edge with a six weight rod. <laughs> they displace a lot of water. Come on. Tough to turn their heads, too. That's what you call a fish. Look at this. <laughs> How about that? This fish has got to be 10 pounds plus. Look at that. Isn't that beautiful? And that's what you expect to get when you come out here and see Brent. Just big, big fish, light tackle. Oh, that's just awesome. Well, we'll give her a drink and then we'll let her go. All right, look at that. That is just phenomenal. Look at the back on those fish. Just very, very large. Well, she's ready to go. We're gonna let her go, swim away. There she goes. Look at that. Whoa! He's done, Brent. Oh, there he is. Oh, man. That's a fish. Thanks a lot for taking us out. We'll let that guy go. Fantastic. Always a lot of fun. It's been great having you over. Yeah, you know, yeah. Matt, we had a great time. Having you over and always lots of fun. Come back again and see us another time. And you betcha. Weather kind of dealt you a rough hand today, but you guys come through and hey, did good fishing. It was good. We caught fish. Everything was great. Casting wasn't easy, but the fishing was good. It was good. Make sure when you come on the wild, take care. Conserve the waters. Get a great fish for like this one here. See you next time. We'll take your sport fishing on the fly. Way to go, Swink. Good job. Thank you. To watch all our latest sport fishing on the fly episodes and to order sport fishing on the fly merchandise, head to www.sfotf.ca and if you'd like to book an adventure like this one shown, head to onthefflyadventures.ca and book yourself the trip of a lifetime.